I uh, just want to show you something here real quick. Uh, the plastic on the monogram orbiter is pretty pretty thin as we discovered before. And as you can maybe see here, it sort of bows in the middle. And I put in the cargo bay uh, just to test fit. And it's really not wide enough to do much of anything. It doesn't help really. So um, I think what I'm going to do here is put in the aft bulkhead and then run some bracing across here to widen this fuselage to the correct to the correct width. All right, so here's the um, horizontal bracing I put in. This was in lieu of putting in the cargo bay. And um, again, I did this because the cargo bay didn't uh, press against the sides of the fuselage and, and keep it straight. Um, this is thin plastic, it's kind, of, it's kind of warped a little bit. So that's what I put in there for that. If you also look down there, you can see the sheet styrene for the um, wheel wells, how I tabbed it over there. And then here it is on both the nose and the main landing gear. And then here is what uh, one of the main landing gear doors looks like. And you really can't fit it in here with all these hinges and tabs and all on it. So what you got to do is cut all that stuff off. And when you do that, then pretty much it goes right in there. No problem. And it's just a matter of putting it all up and you're good. All right, so I uh, pretty much built up the um, monogram shuttle again, and I got to the windows, and I came up with the idea of using some plastic uh, card to do in the shape of the windows, and then actually attach them to the glass that comes with the kit. And the result of that is what you see here. And I wasn't too unhappy with this um, until I started looking at it, and then I then I realized that. Um, even this is not going to get it done well enough because there's just too much of a gap between the window panes here. So um, I cast these with the idea, since I already built these window shapes and everything, I cast these with the idea that I would just cut them down and then modify them a little bit more and uh, just do a whole new beanie cap for the shuttle. So I did this. I hear the cast ones. But they didn't come out quite as consistent as I wanted them to. So then I decided just to go ahead and go with some sheet styrene from scratch, some thicker sheet styrene, and redo the windows yet again so it'll all be the same uh, thickness. And I did that, and I glued them all in to this new beanie cap. I just cut this out of the orbiter. And, uh, and this is looking pretty good. So the idea is I'm going to fill all this in, smooth it all out, and do some other work with the tile here, and then uh, cast the whole thing in clear resin. And then whenever I do a space shuttle, I've got it all right there in clear resin. I don't have to worry about doing these windows ever again. So I've already started the tape off, and I'm going to do the putty work around here. And then we'll take a look at it uh, when I'm done. Okay, just a quick um, little lessons learned. Um, the first time I did this monogram shuttle, I uh, attached the payload bay doors, and um, it comes with the kit comes with these hinges along here, which I've cut these off, but they're these uh, square holes in the cargo bay door so they can actually go under the hinges, and the hinges are way oversized and not really necessary if you can have the the door shut anyway. But um, last time I did this, I just putted these holes up and. Um, it was difficult to hide them completely because there was no backing behind them. So this time I've uh, just put some some strip plastic there. So that way um, when I putty them up, it'll have a little bit of support. be much better. All right, here it is, the monogram beanie cap reconstruction project almost complete. As you can see, I've uh, drilled out the Star Trek ports and tapered them and uh, put a a uh, backing covering underneath them. I reframed uh, all these windows very very carefully and very painstakingly and then uh, tiled all around them. This uh, looks a little bit rough right now. Um, I have to go back and use some putty to transition the different tile areas and the gaps to make it all look uniform but I don't, I don't anticipate any problems you know, with doing that. 
And, uh, and lastly, here are some new windows around the orbiter payload specialist area. So the idea is uh, once I'm completely satisfied with this, then it'll be cast in clear resin and we'll be able to mask off the windows and, uh, and uh, reinstall this onto our orbiter. And it should look good. Well, um, after quite a lot of work, uh, a couple months actually, the uh, new shuttle beanie cap is uh, finally complete. The master's finally complete. So here it is um, in all its glory. It's not perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. And um, I cut it with uh, some clear gloss tonight to make it nice and smooth for casting. So bottom's nothing special, just a lot of fill work in here. So the idea now is to take this and uh, make some clear copies of it. Now, how we're going to do that, I'm going to take you through the step, take you through the step by step. Uh, what we have here is the start for our molding process. Let me back up a little bit. All right, here we go. So um, all I've really done here is I've uh, taken some Legos, as you can see. I've taken some regular clay, uh, the kind that doesn't, the kind that doesn't harden, and I've uh, rolled it out as flat as possible. I've put it on a Lego base, and I've surrounded um, uh, it with, with of course Legos here, and I've got it right at the same height as the Lego. So that gives you enough depth actually to work with um, to make yourself a good solid mold. So then what we're going to do is we're going to put this right here. All right. And uh, do a few other things. We're going to key this and uh, then build up the Legos around it and use it as the top half of our mold. So I'm going to go ahead and start working uh, on that now.